From Cali to Tally, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source, and this is Wake Up Warchant. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. It's Friday, Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. Wake up! Way to be, everybody. Way to way to make it to Friday. Don't you don't you remember this awesome song, everybody? Sorry to, to put it on you on a Friday, but it is Friday after all. Way to make it to the end of the week. Good on you, everybody. Well, I'm Aslan. Corey will join us here in a moment. Uh, today's program is just going to be, uh, or just going to be, rather, uh, pretty much our discussion that we have with uh, Terrell Buckley. Uh, T-Buck, ninth Florida State Seminole to make it to the College Football Hall of Fame. He's currently up in Starkville as a cornerbacks coach for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. So we're going to talk to him about the honor of being a Hall of Famer and uh, things of that nature. Otherwise, on the news front, it's all fairly quiet as of the recording of this program. Florida State apparently still trying to figure out who they're going to move in and out the building, if you will, in terms of who's going to go maybe behind the scenes, who's going to be an on-field coach. Can they get it done? Can they get waivers? Uh, Is it on the up and up with compliance? So as those things uh, try to sort themselves out, it's going to take some time and and people are freaking out, but it's it's just the way it is. It's not because Warchant drags their feet on anything. Uh, when it's done, when it's legit, uh, we'll let you know. Uh, check it out, Warchant.com. Use the promo code Warchant30 for 30 free days of access. Uh, we do have a little more clarity on the Jalen Hurt situation. Uh, the update's on the Tribal Council. Not going to spill the beans, but it's not the most encouraging news if you're a Florida State fan and we're counting on Jalen Hurts or hoping that he would come to Tallahassee and spark everything. I'm, I'm not going to play the whole, I think Sam Howell's awesome, and then he commits to UNC, so, oh, he's really not that good anymore. Jalen Hurts would have been nice, um, but I think what had Corey and I maybe most uh, enticed about him possibly coming to Tallahassee was if it was going to be Willie Taggart's system, or uh, maybe something more predicated on what he ran at USF with Quentin Flowers, a guy who uh, mainly it seemed to rely on his legs, but it's going to be, uh, by and large, it's going to be Kendall Browse's show on the offensive side of things, so... Uh, perhaps it's not a marriage as vital or as, um, I don't know, as simpatico, perhaps, as it would have been had it been uh, Willie's offense. There's a couple schools he's thinking about. If you want to know who they are, go to Warchant, check it out. Otherwise, it doesn't seem like Florida State right now is um, going to place in the uh, the run and the race for um, Jalen Hurts. But uh, life will go on. And if you look at, real quick, I mean, we're not gonna, I'm not going to spew too much here. Uh, if you look at Kendall Browse's track record at Baylor, um, you know, he hasn't really depended on a lot of, you know, crazy uh, running quarterbacks. Uh, at Houston, he had to have Derek King. Uh, Seth Russell at Baylor was actually very fast. I think that guy was actually clocked at a 4-5 or five before his uh, injury started kind of sapping him of his athletic ability and obviously RG3. But, you know, Jarrett Stidham, Bryce Petty, those were two guys who, um, you know, really helped things get cooking down there at Baylor for uh, uh, Kendall and his pops. And uh, neither of those guys really uh, – not, they were a threat to run, but they're not guys like Jalen Hurts that are going to convert on third and two every single time. That wasn't something that uh, their offense was predicated on. I mean, Kendall Browse just seems to put points on the board no matter who he has. If he's got uh, an NFL prospect like Bryce Petty or RG3, a Heisman winner, uh, if he's got a guy who's a, a pretty solid quarterback in college like Seth Russell or Jared Stidham, Stidham might even go uh, high in the draft. Who knows how high he would have gone had he stayed with uh, a Browse system. So uh, nothing to really panic on. Again, though, it looks like it probably is going to be DeAndre and James Blackman battling out for things. Um, and uh, that's where we sit at right now. But uh, it's not the end of the world. Things will all work out. We're going to feel good and optimistic about it. But uh, that's all I got to say. Really nothing else to share on that front. But again, if something happens of utmost importance, uh, it'll be on Warchant.com, I promise. And with that said, uh, let's talk to Terrell Buckley. Could he be the next defensive backs coach at Florida State? Uh, probably about the 17-minute mark is when I ask him. All right, folks, what's up? Here we go. As, uh, as promised, we've got a Hall of Famer on board today. Man, that's always a good thing, right, Corey? People have to listen to us. They can listen to a Hall of Famer. Yeah, they can actually get some insight from someone who knows what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, you folks know him as T-Buck, uh, Terrell Buckley, now part of the College Football Hall of Famer. He'll be in Shrine later on, uh, joins us here on Wake Up or Chant. Terrell, thanks for the time, man. How are you? Man, thank you. Uh, being introduced like that is, is uh, something I can get used to. I, I like the sound of that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Everything is pretty cool. cool. Sitting here with my youngest daughter sitting in the office at the facility here in Starkville, uh, uh, doing a little recruiting, uh, you know, it never stops. But everything is good. I was about to say, like, there's this, I mean, there's like a quiet period or whatever, dead period, like you can't just go home and be a dad right now? 
No, nah, you, you can go uh, and be you know, your dad the whole time. You know, I got three, so I'm a dad always. Okay. And then you create, like right now, to five, and then after that, we have, we're have we going to have a dinner date. We just had a dinner dinner date where we ate in here, and we have a movie date afterwards. So we, we have to strategically plan those dates. <laughs> right on. Terrell, how did you uh, – it's different than the NFL, I think, with College Football Hall of Fame. Like, I don't know if you know if you're a nominee or how many – when your name even comes up. Like, in my opinion, you should have been there a decade ago. But how did you get the call? How did you find out that uh, you had made it, that you were a College Football Hall of Famer? Oh, man, it's, it was the weirdest thing. Also, one that was funny, uh, you know, I get a lot of fan mail here, so it, it – came in a box this this ball came in a box and so i had the box along with my other other mail and it has been it was sitting in my office for about three four days and then i ended up riding to georgia and was going through my mail getting ready to sign some cards and send it back and i opened the box the box is open and i see you know how you know that the nfl uh, symbol, mm-hmm. the college Hall of Fame thing symbol, Ooh. and I saw the symbol and it was like, wow, no, yeah, you know, you go through all these emotions. Oh, like for real? Are you kidding me? You know, you back and forth for about five minutes. I'm saying this all out loud, uh, and finally I unwrapped it, bubble, and I saw the ball and it said, "Bam, congratulations!" and and that was. That's how I found out. It was it was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah, man. That's uh, well. Number one, it's very well deserved. Uh, I figured. I didn't know if they gave you a phone call or or how that would work. I no. think I wanted to ask you when it comes to Florida State. You you grew up in. I guess you. I know you're from Pascagoula. I assume you were born and raised there. But how did you end up at Florida State? And were, did you ever I- even consider? Not to impugn or say anything negative about your current place of employment, but did you ever consider the the in-state schools, or were you always trying to go to Florida State? No, actually, I was born in Columbia, Mississippi, which is right outside of Hattiesburg. Home of Walter Payton. Uh, yes, great, great Walter Payton. Two Hall of Famers now in yeah. Columbia. Yeah, two yeah, Hall I of moved, Famers. There we go. We moved to the Gulfshe, Pascagoula area. That's where I grew up. Uh, now, the distance from Pascagoula, to Florida State is kind of the same distance to Starkville from where I was at. Okay. And Mississippi State was not very good. Uh, and they were still, I wasn't going up north to the other school. Right. So I visit, I had to visit both, but I wasn't going there. This one, Mississippi State had a chance, but I mean, where they was at and what Florida State was doing and hanging out meeting Dion and Leroy Butler, the Fab Four, <clears throat> Coach Bowden, Big Andrews, uh, that wasn't that wasn't really that was not really hard. I was gonna say, <laughs> did Dion did did you have a, I know he was he had left before you got there, but I assume on a recruiting trip you had met Dion and, and what was that? Because people that don't know, I mean it was thirty years ago, but he was bigger than life. I mean he was a huge star even as a college cornerback. Did you meet him, and what was that interaction like? Uh, it was awesome. Yeah, I met Dee. Dee we hung out, uh, spent some time together, gave me some advice on what what to expect. Uh, said it was a great decision coming in, and as a uh, a person that was coming from Mississippi that had just set records, own records, uh, played baseball, I, I ran track, did similar stuff that, that Dee did, I just – Felt like it was only fitting to try to follow in that. And Coach Andrews playing for Coach Brian, Coach D, with Dion setting the standard that he set at Florida State, it was like, why not? And and for me, you love I love challenges. I love trying to see can can you get to that level. So it was a, a perfect situation, perfect storm uh, that I was really really excited about. Do you have any funny – obviously, you're a really good player, uh, but Mickey Andrews is Mickey Andrews. Um, he's going to yeah. coach you hard whether you're a Thorpe winner or a third stringer. Your freshman year, I don't even know if you were ready for it, but what do you have any funny memories or stories about the way Mickey was on a practice field? 
It was, I mean, I, I, I got a bunch of them, uh, <laughs> but I can't tell you about all of them. Right, sure. Some of them not. They're, they're kind of X-rated. Uh, <laughs> one of them was when when I first arrived, we, you know, they had the three-day minute count for just the freshmen, just us. Right. And we out there, and I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm getting at it. I'm making plays. I'm talking trash because there's other high school kids, uh, and and that was eating Coach Andrews up. And finally, he came over, spitting with his, you know, he's chewing the seeds and right. looking him in the eyes. Do, 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 do. You little, you know, you little. I tell you what, you wait till them the varsity get here. They're going to tear your tail up. I just can't wait till they get here. Uh, and I looked him in the eye and said, Coach, they're going to get the same thing, Coach. Boy, that, he, he almost threw a gasket when I said that. <laughs> that is one of the stories. That was one of my introductions where I had have a DB coach, defensive coordinator, coming to me and telling me that I'm going to get tore up when – when the varsity get here, that was different. That was a little mm-hmm. different. So, but Coach Andrew was like that, and that's why I love him. Was he day. right or wrong? Uh, you did, did you get wrong. tore up by the varsity guys? <laughs> they they got it. They yeah. got it from me. <laughs> I'm sure they did, man. <laughs> no, that long thoughts that foul four now. It, it was fifty fifty. That was sure. that was an educational year going up against the foul four was was unbelievable and exciting at the time. Uh, it, it was great. Florida State legend and uh, new Hall of Famer Terrell Buckley joining us here on Wake Up or Chant. For the kids listening, uh, mom and dad, let's let them know. Uh, Terrell Sill, uh, they call him T-Buck. Sill owns a single season interception record with 12 at Florida State. Career interception mark with 21. That's actually the 10th most in FBS history. Uh, and his 501 career interception return yards are still an NCAA record. Do you have mm. a play um, from your three years at, at Florida State? I mean, I, I think most people maybe um, think of the pick six against Michigan. But do you have another play that stands out? I mean, you ha- you made a 1,000 of them, but maybe one or two other plays that you remember fondly or even games that you remember fondly other than – uh, the the pick six on like I think that was the second play of the game against Desmond mm-hmm. Howard. I have a couple that that doesn't get the pub. I had one my freshman year against uh, I think it was uh, Middle Tennessee State uh, Memphis. It was against Memphis. People don't realize this. I had a I had an interception in the back end zone, right. and I brought it out, took it out by eighty yards, and they said I stepped out. So that's another 80 yards. And I remember that play. I I, I kind of weaved and dodged through, through probably half of the team with the guys, all the teammates making great blocks. Uh, I remember that play because it was my freshman year and the first big, I think, interception return I had. Uh, the second one play was against Syracuse my junior year with Rocket Ishmael. Ran a, a like a slant on me, a miniature post, and I had to jump over. I jumped over the top of him to to get the interception, uh, which was one of the ones I, I never forget. Uh, and the last one was Louisville. You know, it's a theme of bringing the interception out of the end zone uh, for a big play for us. So it, there, and the teammates again on all of those plays, you're gonna see. My teammates, the guys that I came in with making big blocks and setting it up for me. Uh, I always tell everybody I cannot, I will not be a Hall of Famer without the coaches and my teammates and everybody uh, that was helping, helping me do all those things. T Buck, now you've you've made your way up into the upper echelons of the coaching profession, you know, mm-hmm. Mississippi mm-hmm. State coaching the safeties. Can you just give us an idea of how different it is now for a student athlete at, at this level, just in terms of the amount of resources uh, that players have, the amount of coaching you give these players, and I guess the general climate around college football. I mean, you weren't playing that long ago, but it just feels like it, it was a completely different generation. It is. It's. It's. Uh, and I'm actually. I'm, I'm coaching the corners here. I've done a little bit of everything. Uh, the I would say the the phones, the Twitter, uh, the exposure, uh, the pressure, 
the seven on seven camps. Uh, these young men are under tremendous pressure from probably ninth or tenth grade. I mean, we often we often kids in eighth grade now, and so they have to live with these expectations from ninth grade, and they still need development. I mean, you're not you you're only going to find a couple guys that are ready that still doesn't need a whole lot of coaching. Most guys need still that development, that coaching, that fundamental stuff, and uh, understanding of what this game is about. The game of football is not changing when coach, since Coach Bowden played and coached. When he told us, it's still, you have to be in shape. It's tackling. It's blocking. It's making big plays, minimizing your mistakes, understanding what the game of football is about. I think that's been the biggest difference is trying to figure out a way to get these young men to understand that under the tremendous pressure of where well, you need to go to the NFL, you got uh, Sports Center, you got FX Fox, uh, Fox Sport, you have all these different entities that are telling them that they're great already and they don't need any more coaching, they don't need any more development, which is absolutely wrong. That's the challenge, I think, for not only the, the players but coaches also. And so once you figure that out as a coach, I think you can help that young man, a young man, a young man develop not only as players but as young men. You know, uh, Terrell, I've always thought, you know, I watched your career pretty closely. I think I was a, a 12- or 13-year-old kid uh, and a big Terrell mm-hmm. Buckley fan. Um, yes, yeah, appreciate I, do, do you – do you help your punt returners? You, you. I still think you're probably the best punt returner I've ever seen. The most exciting, the flashiest. I, I know you don't te- – like the Penn State game, I know you're not teaching punt returners to run 25 yards in the wrong direction, <laughs> then to turn the corner and almost score a touchdown. But do you help at all with, with your punt returners? I know your full-time job is a, is a DB's coach, but you're the one of the best that ever do it, and can it even be taught what you have? I think, and by the way, yes, I I've, I've, I work special teams. I do the. I've actually, when I was at Akron, I did the whole punt return, which was probably the most exciting job I've ever had working in the MAC, because the MAC is the wild, wild west. Right. Everything goes. I mean, you you got to prepare. Right. But the the returners this past year, I had the punt returners and the kickoff return guys, and we did we did okay. I went through a couple of punt returners to get to the one I had in bowl game. But, yes, there there are some things that you can do. I set up cones. I'll give you an example. I set up cones, spread them out, and try to simulate if the garners is coming down or one of the other guys come free, where the, the punt returner can make start flat or start at them. One cut is almost like a running back. One cut and get up field. Right. And run to daylight. Run. The key is run to daylight. Once you get to daylight and you see the kicker, you got to score. Right. That's the only rule. You see the kicker, you got to score. Do you? So we have cut, run to daylight, see the kicker, score. Do you ever show them your clips? Like, hey, come to YouTube. Just watch this three-minute clip of me returning punts. Do they know? It is. Like the kids you coach now, yeah. do they know? Oh, it's funny. They they find it now because once, just like we're talking, right, and I'm telling them, no, you can make that cut. Make that cut and get upfield. And they're saying, I can't make that cut. I'm like, yes, you can. So we have this five-minute conversation. And then I finish the conversation. I say, Google me. That's the word, you know, go Google me. And then they come back and be like, okay, I can make that cut. (laughs) Well, not everybody's Terrell Buckley, though. It's funny. Uh, Terrell, you know, so many folks that obviously are listening to this program are Florida State fans and have a very high opinion of of Florida State. And, and, you know, they they look at Mississippi State and and they don't realize kind of the strides that have been made uh, in in Starkville in the last 10 years. I mean, this past season, it looks like your guys' passing defense was was top 10 in the nation. Uh, it looks like there might be an opening down here. Like, can I do anything to help? 
can, can I pack some boxes for you? Do I need to get in front of a car of uh, Willie Taggart? Can we bring you home? I think it would be really good. Listen, listen we, I, I'm, I'm in Mississippi, right? Mississippi State, and I answered it. We're the number one defense in the country. <laughs> number, we, are, we finish in the top two of every major category. This is my 12th year coaching between GA Ship at Florida State and here. Mm. I have recruited, developed, and coached it after this year. Cross my finger, be 15 guys that have signed professional contracts. A couple first rounders. Next year, I will, I think I got the best corner uh, in the country, Cam Danson, number three. That will be probably a top five, top ten pick next year. And the other corner will be another. Uh, another prospect. So we got a couple guys down here, pop. Coach. We got Levante got Taylor, Stanford Samuels the third. They're good. You can quit coach the hard sell, Aslan. Quit the hard sell. Yeah, it's one of those things of of I. You know, you can't make calls. I can't make calls. Uh, all I can do, I want to coach. Uh, Mississippi State has given me a, a obviously a great opportunity to do that. And that, that is all I can control. Just let it play. I can't control anything else. And wherever I'm at, which is here now, I give 100% and try to develop, coach uh, guys on and off the field. Terrell, when you coach, uh, I, again, I rem- again, I grew up with you. I remember watching you. I do- again, unlike just the punt returner, I don't remember seeing another cornerback that attacked the ball like you did, almost like when the, mm-hmm. the quarterback was throwing to you. Like it was just the yeah. ball's in the air, that's my ball. Did you? Yes. I assume you were born with that mindset, or maybe you developed it in youth leagues. But how do you instill that mindset in the kids you're coaching? And can you? You either have it or you don't. That mentality what? that you had, that obviously a guy like Dion had, where hey, if he's going to test me, I'm going to get. That's my ball. I think there's a combination. I think you were born. A, the, the good Lord bless you with some, some instincts and some things. And I think through preparation and knowledge and wisdom, you start to uh, take advantage of and enhance that. One of the things I've done to uh, help my guys is we do, every drill I do has a ball in it. And I'm not throwing that same ball right in front. We use jug machines, throw it 60 yards. Uh, we throw cone routes. Uh, we do all that with a ball. This is after we started at film. The key to making plays, what I tell God, for me as a player and now as a coach, is I, I'm going to know you're going to throw it at before you throw it. That means the knowledge of the game. Knowledge. I'm going to know uh, on run support, know where the end is supposed to fit. You know your defense, know where the safety is fit, know the linebackers. Then you go to the offense, you know who you're covering. We've made plays. I made as a player, as a coach now, from the offensive coordinator. I call them scary offensive coordinator, conservative, aggressive. If you watched the championship game last night, uh, a couple nights ago, Tua, and this is why our guys played well against Alabama, he is an inside throwing quarterback, right? All of his balls, he's accurate inside the hash, the numbers. So how do you think the corners played last year? We made him throw what? If I'm telling you he's deadly throwing inside, what am I going to make him throw all game? Outside. Towards the boundary. Simple. Right? <laughs> right. But if you, don't, if you don't know that and you don't study that, now every guy is different. And obviously they'll make adjustments. They threw one out. And then you have to tell yourself and tell the coach, hey, they they do change. They will throw a couple outs, but don't panic. The bread and butter is what? Inside. So making plays is a combination of being blessed, practicing it, catching the ball at different angles, different levels, eyesight, what you look. When they throw a deep ball, this drives me crazy with, with a lot of corners and even some coaches where the DB is running and the receiver looks and the DB looks and he looks at a flat level like the ball is coming flat. 
when they right. throw on a deep ball, where is the ball coming? From up top. So why are you practicing looking flat when the ball is coming up top? Something that simple is amazing that if you teach that and you go over and over again, that all of a sudden those those little bit of instincts that you've been blessed with, they start to uh, develop and come out more and more, and then you you provide that with the knowledge of the game. Where you at on the field? Are we backed up? Are we in the middle of the field? And everybody knows this. Y'all should know this. Where where on the field do you get the most deep balls or double moves? So I'm gonna test you guys real quick. Where you get the most double moves is where you're on the well between the between the numbers and the and the end line, right? Well, I'm talking about you start on the goal line, go okay. field is 100 yards, right? Well, I didn't so realize you'd pop quiz. Oh, he's killing us. Coach you're going to get the deep ball. Probably on their own, the offense's own side of the field. Okay, that's that's that's, that's close. All right, I'm getting close. close. Right. I'm getting close. I need one more answer. I mean, that's, that's close. All right, Aslan, what do you think? We're, t- we're, talking, we're talking about in field position. Double, yeah, double moves. Where would you get one? Our uh, deep balls. Our deep ball. Anything deep that's consistent. If you put, pick an area out on the field that you can say, eighty-five percent of the time, when there's a deep ball, if there's a deep ball in the game, it's coming from this area of the field. Inside your own twenty. I mean, I know you. Oh. Said- Y'all got sit it right there. I'll make y'all better players. All right, there we go. Good, we need Coach it. Five up. minutes. Coach us up. So, take this out. Forty, their side. Forty to forty. When I say forty to forty, my corners, DPs know right now when they running on the field, play top down because double move deep balls are coming because the offense have gotten out of their red zone area. The coordinator's feeling what a little more confident. Right. Because the game of football is field position. Now, first, second down, they're going to take a shot. Right. 40 to 40. Once they pass that side of the 40 and get down in the field goal range, they get a little more conservative. We got a field goal. Let's play for points. So I think uh, if you can get that across to your player with the understanding, that's just one example of some of the stuff that I, as, as a guy that, Loved, loved to make plays when I played. I mean, that was my thing. I had to figure out a way. How can I make plays and still do my job and be part of top-ranked defenses? And that's one of the things that I finally realized that I kept doing was the knowledge, studying, studying everybody, not just my defense, not just the offense, but the coaches and their ways of thinking that helped me. Uh, and I, I try to get that to the players, and I think that's why this year, for the first time, I ever been part of a cornerback group that did not give up a touchdown in man to man situation. Wow! And and during the regular season, it, it was unbelievable. That, that it was a special special year. The guys bought into, and I played four guys. Right. And I can only say that's because of the, the teaching and knowledge. Merged with their athletic ability, Terrell. It was pretty. It was pretty special. I, I wanted to bring it back to, and that is that's incredible. It, it was not that was not the case here at Florida State this year with the with the touchdown passes given up. Uh, I wanted to bring mm-hmm. it back to Florida State in your time. I wrote a column, I guess, earlier this week about if the playoffs had been around all oh. throughout the dynasty run. Oh. I feel like you guys would have made the playoffs. Florida State would have made the playoffs like eleven or twelve of the fourteen years. And one of my one of my hypotheses was the ninety one team. You guys oh, had your heart gosh. broken by the wide right game. Yeah. Um, by the way, Mickey is a Hall of Famer and all time great coach. I would have had you up on Copeland. Don't give him. You know what I'm saying on that. I think it was fourth and six or whatever it was before their before. Yeah. Their, I'm sure you remember it. I don't need to bring up painful memories. <laughs> um, anyway. Yeah. What well, do you think I'm you would have beaten Florida? I'm, I'm gonna explain that play. It okay, was, yeah, let's do it. it. And now I want to get to my question. Explain it. What happened there? Well, what happened was you you in between, and and people don't realize when when you line up, and like you said, when you're playing off. Now, yes, we I could have bailed. We didn't bail back then. You know, there's some couple things that all of us wish we could have changed. But the the safety line up, he got on his spot, and man, and I couldn't see. 
Right. And we was a three-step reading team, as obviously, as you know, just like we did in Michigan. Right. Right? So I had to back up a little bit. And this is when you still know, no matter what happened, that some things are meant to be. As I'm breaking on the ball, if you notice, I'm shooting, I'm trying to go through his ribs, like through side of his ribs, up through and punch the ball out. And as I'm coming, he tucks his arms in, which Copeland never really did, and he kind of collapsed. So my hand goes around on the outside of his of his tricep and hits the top of the ball. Matter of inches, and that's right. the game. That's one of the things that everybody learned from that game. Between that play, a couple more plays, the tight end. Y'all, you probably remember this play. Another fourth and about uh, third and ten, I think, in the middle of the field. The tight end catches a one-handed over a guy, uh, one of our guys that draped all over him. Right. Which he hadn't caught a ball all freaking year, I think. <laughs> right. But then we have a wide right. Yeah, and that was just a few inches. And that was come on, man. That's a thirty-four yard field goal. We need. I know he's a walk on. We need to make that. My, <laughs> but but uh, but my question was uh, number one. I talked to Gino Toretta about that play. I was doing a story about mm-hmm. it a few years ago, and he said when he threw the pass, he had never held his breath more on a pass because he was fifty percent convinced you would be going the other way with the ball because he couldn't see you yeah. either. So he was deathly he afraid of what was going to happen yeah. on that play. But I was going to say. If the college football playoff had been around in 1991 and you knew your season wasn't over, because I think even after that loss, y'all were third in the country, yeah. don't you agree with my hypothesis that y'all go beat the tar out of Florida? Oh, not only agree, but I'm, I'm 100% uh, certain that we would because the air was taken out. Yeah, and for it was us completely deflating. Florida, the way we played them, I thought showed how much talent. That right. 1991 team was the most talented team that I ever been on that didn't go besides before I got to the Dolphins in 2003 with Junior Seau, late great, rest in right. peace. Oh, that was the most talented team and most disheartened uh, end of the season that I ever had. And, and you're right, man. I, I wish that was a playoff because we would have beat, I know we would have beat Florida and then got in the playoffs and got it going again. Yeah, I mean, you only lost fourteen to nine, and you were heartbroken. Like you, you know, heartbroken. Yeah, I mean, it was. I, it was just. Uh, I remember walking out of that stadium and just everybody. It was just like walking out of a. And I don't mean to be dismissive or callous, but it was like walking out of a funeral, just completely yeah. quiet because people thought, man, this was supposed to be the team, and it came down to like three yeah. inches to the right of a to the right of a goalpost. But our Eric Terrell know, made man. the catch. That, a lot that, of things going to happen, T. Buck. We tough. don't need to relive the relive <laughs> the past. But uh, for real, I, I just wanted to say, and then Aslan will close it out. Congratulations, man! It is very well deserved. Um, you are one of the best in uh, in school history, obviously, and and this proves you're one of the best in college football history, man. So seriously, congratulations. Well, thank you so much. Thank you guys for your time, and thank you for allowing me to relive some memories, uh, great memories uh, in Tallahassee. Tell all the fans I love them. I appreciate everything they've done for me and my family. Uh, my daughter loved it. You know, she's a, a long and my, and my ex. So I appreciate everything that has happened in Tallahassee. Forever grateful. Again, folks, T-Buck, the ninth knoll that will go to the College Football Hall of Fame, fifth overall pick. Uh, he also won a Super Bowl, too, so we'll, we'll let him slide on the, the wide right. Nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Terrell Buckley, thanks so much for your Thank time. You we guys. appreciate it, man. Warchant.com is the ultimate inside source for FSU football and recruiting. And now you can get in on the action for free for an entire month. Warchant.com is offering a risk-free 30-day trial subscription. Get full access to the number one website covering the Seminoles just by entering the promo code WARCHANT30. That's WARCHANT30. Sign up and get in on the world's most active FSU message boards. Receive breaking news, stories from our award-winning staff, plus get exclusive interviews and videos. Just enter the promo code WARCHANT30. WARCHANT.com, your ultimate Seminole sports source.